Okay, now so now we, we see that we calculated the um, the angular momentum of the particle basically at infinity when it's uh, coming in from very far away and that's equal to uh, the mass of the particle times its initial uh, velocity, its initial speed times the impact parameter B. Okay, and this since it, since angular momentum is conserved, this means that this value of the angular momentum is that it, the particle has this, this same angular momentum throughout its entire trajectory. Okay. Um, now another generic general definition for the angular momentum of a particular par of a particle is equal to uh, the mass times the distance squared from a particular point times um, the um, angular angular uh, uh, the angular velocity omega sorry the angular frequency omega okay and this basically comes from the fact that that uh, that uh, l that the angular momentum is also equal to the moment of inertia times omega and for a, a single particle of mass m located at distance r excuse me, from the point that you're measuring angular momentum, uh, uh, the moment of inertia is just equal to the mass times r squared. Okay, so now if we equate uh, these two, uh, these two things, okay, then we have that m b v sub zero is equal to m r squared omega, okay, the m's drop away, and um, another definition for the, this is the, again, the, um, this is the angular frequency, and so um, this is also equal to m r squared uh, d phi dt, okay, the time rate of change of the angle, uh, all right, and so in the end, uh, what we're left with is a relationship between, uh, we can put it in this form, uh, between the uh, distance to the particle, r, and the time rate of change of the angle uh, between the velocity, between its trajectory at a particular time um, and its position, okay, and its position vector phi as defined here and or, or the inverse of that okay so r squared is equal to the impact parameter b times the initial velocity times inverse of the time rate of change of the of the angle um, phi okay so this is uh, this is at the moment this is just so this just gives us a useful relationship between r and f and the time rate of change of phi for a particular impact parameter and particular velocity Okay, so now um, the next consideration which will help us is Newton's laws, good old Newton's laws, okay? So F equals uh, Newton's second law, F equals MA. We can divide the force into, into um, uh, X, an X component and a Y component, okay? And if we concentrate on the Y component, then we have um, that the, um, the Y component of the force Again, the radial force, the Coulomb repulsion, is just F times sine of phi, okay? And um, we, we already wrote down an expression for F, the Coulomb repulsion, uh, a couple slides ago, okay? And this, it's just equal to Z times Z times E, uh, e squared over 4 pi epsilon not r squared, and now we're multiplying that by sine phi, okay? <coughs> and now we have um, this expression, we have r squared here, and if you recall, we just wrote down an expression for r squared as a function of b v sub zero and the time rate of change of uh, phi, okay? So if you plug that expression in, you get, you get this one, and now we have b v sub zero d phi dt, and of course, this is just equal to um, the time rate of change of the vertical component of the momentum.